Adjustment layers are one of the most essential tools in any Final Cut Pro editor's toolbox. Nearly every plugin developer has created an adjustment for you to download completely for free. But I felt like there was some innovation that could maybe happen in the adjustment layer space. So I'm super excited to announce that I'm releasing my Adjustment Plus plugin. It's pay what you want, so just put $0 into the checkout box to download it completely for free. Or if you feel like supporting the channel, you can throw in a couple dollars. For those of you that don't know what an adjustment layer is. Typically, if I were to color grade these different shots by adding in a LUT, I would need to go to my effects and apply the custom LUT effect. I would change that over to whatever LUT I want to use. Then if I wanted to copy and paste that across all of the effects, I would push Command C, select all the other shots, push Command Shift V, and then push paste. So now all of these shots have that LUT. But I feel like this is a whole lot of steps and maybe down the road I decide that I want to change the mix value. So on this first shot, I would drop the mix down to 53.85% and I would need to do that same thing with each and every one of these clips. Super tedious, very time consuming and it definitely doesn't need to be that way. So that is where the adjustment layer comes into play. With an adjustment layer, I can just click and drag it down onto my timeline from my titles, extend it out over the duration of my video. I'll apply the custom LUT effect and we can jump into our effects inspector and apply that same LUT. So now all of these clips have that LUT. Then maybe I want to adjust the mix value. I'll drag that down. And now all of those clips have that exact same mix value. So this is where the real power of adjustment layers comes into play. Because if you have a look that you want to apply across your entire video, it's very simple to do with adjustment layers. But something I noticed when I used adjustment layers is there were frequently steps I needed to take with that adjustment layer that I felt like could be a little bit more streamlined. For example, I almost always apply LUTs and letterboxing, blur and sharpening onto my adjustment layers and I don't wanna have to go into my effects every single time to find those. So that is why I made Adjustment Plus. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this custom LUT effect so we are left with just the base adjustment layer. No changes have been made. But what's really handy about Adjustment Plus is at any time, you can go up into the title inspector. And unlike almost every single other adjustment layer you'll see, there are actually a whole lot of different tools inside of the title inspector. First and foremost, the LUT. You're almost always going to apply your LUTs onto an adjustment layer. So I put that at the very top. We can go ahead, change this over to the LUT that I want to apply. And now all of these clips have that LUT. We can change the input and output on that. We can change the mix value. It's really up to you. Additionally, I've added in a gamma slider. This is essentially the brightness. In Final Cut Pro, it's super important that you apply your brightness values before you apply a LUT. So I've actually done that in the back end. If you drop this gamma slider, you'll notice that I'm not losing the detail in my highlights and shadows like you would if it was on top of the LUT. So that's super handy. Additionally, I've added in a nice little contrast slider so you can just drag that up really easily. There's a pivot slider for that contrast so you can get slightly different looks. Just a lot of simple features that I use very frequently. But if we continue further down, you'll notice that I've added in sharpening. Now this is actually better than the built-in sharpening inside of Final Cut Pro. So that's already a huge advantage. I can go ahead and enable that. We can bring up the radius and amount and threshold. It's totally up to you how you wanna use these sharpening tools and they can just go a long way to improve the visuals on maybe a slightly blurry shot. But on the flip side, sometimes you don't want that much sharpening on your shot. Maybe it's a little too sharp and looks digital. Well, if that's the case, then I've also added in blur. So we can just check that in. We'll just drag that way up if we want to. And now all of my shots have that same blur factor. Typically, I leave this really subtle and it just helps to take the digital edge off of my videos. You can also introduce some noise. And this is a great way to maybe make a picture look more alive by introducing some noise to it. It won't look like a photograph. It'll look more like a video file. So let's go ahead, introduce the noise bring the amount way up, we can bring the mix down, we can change the blend mode on it if we wanted to. So just a lot of various features here for your noise to get it looking exactly as you need it for your scene. I'll go ahead and disable that noise for right now and we can take a look at the next feature which is letterboxing. I always apply my letterboxes onto an adjustment layer. Just makes it very simple for my entire scene 
to have a letterbox. So we can just change the letterbox mode from none over to one of these different options. Let's just set it to 2.35 by one. There's also a super handy feature to have it animate in or out. So if I check that box, the letterbox is now animated. We can change the speed on it if we wanted to so it comes in much faster, totally up to you. Additionally, we can change the color of the letterbox. We'll just check fill letterbox and we can push it to whatever color we want. Next on this list is this handy horizon guide. Now there are a lot of different plugins out there that offer guides for Final Cut Pro. But the problem with these guides is that if you happen to forget to disable them, those guides are going to show up in your final render. So. I scratched my head for a while and I finally figured out a way to get these guides to automatically disable and hide when you play your video or when you export your video. But just like any other guide, you can move it around on the screen, you can rotate it, super handy, and when I push play, it vanishes, and then when I push pause, it pops back up. Then again, we can also disable it here using the Horizon Guide checkbox. It's a super handy tool and you don't need to worry about disabling it, which could potentially ruin your rendering, making you spend that much more time in the editing chair. If you find this plugin helpful, maybe consider pressing that like button. It does help tremendously. Also, you might wanna check out this video where I show you the top 10 plugins for Final Cut Pro in 2024. Thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.